Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and it's our favorite time of the week, taking a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. All right, starting things off as I like to do whenever we are able with some exclusives. And the first is, I think, a pretty big deal. Uh, we've actually got a couple of Apache knives to show you from Enrique Pena from his X series right now. And the first is this Knife Center exclusive Apache slip joint. It's the first time the Apache has been available as a slip joint. And it's also the first time K390 steel has shown up on one of Enrique's knives. Really awesome upgrade in the blade material here. You thought M390 had a, uh, an edge that lasted a long time. K390, I think blows it out of the water, quite honestly, in my experience with this particular steel. It's not a stainless steel, keep that in mind, but for sheer edge retention, this is one of those kind of real high water marks out there nowadays. Really, really awesome stuff. About two and seven eighths of an inch on the blade length itself with that kind of modified sheep's foot profile, hollow ground with dual or alternating grind lines and a very, very sharp edge out of the box and split inlays on all of these models. There are a couple different options right now. We've got a Jade G10 inlay. We've got marbled carbon fiber. We've got green micarta and this, which is the only one where we've got two colors. We've got black micarta on the bolster and a burnt orange micarta on the handle which as you use this material, as you handle this knife and the uh, kind of oils of your hands work in to the outer layers of the micarta, gets this nice kind of red coloration, reddish orange, really cool material and looks fantastic. Feels good too. There's a bit of contour to that handle. So it's a slip joint knife that feels phenomenal when you go to use it. Because it's a slip joint, obviously it's non-locking, but with the downward tip on the sheep's foot style blade, any type of piercing, the force is pushing back into the back spring, so less likely for it to come loose. And then when you are ready to close it, man, that feels so good. The walk and talk there, so, so nice. Feels great, tuned great out of the box, but of course this is adjustable as well, since you have those Torx uh, fitments rather than this being a pinned slip joint. There's just something super special about how these turned out. Uh, in fact, Seth V, my occasional co-host, who you guys uh, and gals know and love, already took this one home himself uh, and put it to use, which is why the Micarta's already taken on a little bit of that red coloration. Fantastic cutter, fantastic performance, new iteration of the Apache to check out. I mean, how cool is this guy? Now, if you prefer a lock, but you still want a new, different Apache, how about the Micro Apache? I had to check to see if he called it mini or micro. Uh, this is the new micro Apache. Three different colors, black, natural, or green micarta. Uh, price on these, 274. Blade here is M390, not your K390. Two and one eighth of an inch long. Same kind of modified sheep's foot profile to it. And you've got a nice stubby little handle here. It's kind of a, eh, about a three finger grip for me, but it feels pretty darn secure. You've got the frame locking mechanism there to keep it secure in the open position. And then you've got my nemesis, the front flipper. But this one works pretty well, especially impressive considering this is a smaller knife. I think this, the smaller a knife gets, the more tricky front flippers can get. But this one, no problems. It's, it's because it's a little more of that top flipper style, I think, rather than being a front front flipper. Works great with the thumb, works great with the index finger whether you're using just the tip or whether you're kind of wrapping around the top of it to pull back, both of them work fantastically well for such a small knife. Feels great, stashes easily in the pocket thanks to its size. You've got a milled titanium pocket clip there on the back, ball bearings in the pivot. Just an awesome little utility knife here. Excellent performance, excellent feel. Yeah, what more can I say? I like it a lot. All right, next we have a Sprint Run Spider Co. This is the Urban, uh, not Urban Lightweight, which most of the uh, the Urban series right now comes with FRN handles. This has an Ivory G10 handle. Price on this $280. And this is kind of a, a, a pattern that I have some experience with, or uh, some, some history with, I should say. 
I took one of these at one point, uh, the, the, land, the lightweight version. I needed a, or I wanted at least, a two and a half inch non-locking blade that was one hand opening and had some safety features involved, which this knife had all of that except for the blade length. The lightweight versions, it's like 2.6 inches. So I kind of ground it down to bring the uh, blade length in a little bit shorter. But on this sprint run, it's essentially already been done out of the box. This blade is just under two and a half inches long. Kind of cool for uh, from my perspective, at least, and for my needs, at least. Damn steel blade here as well. So you've got performance in addition to the good looks of a Damascus blade. And this is the Bjorkman's twist pattern, as you can see inscribed right there on the front of this Italian made knife. Full flat grind, gonna slice really nicely. And this is another slip joint knife. You've got a half stop. The action is not as snappy as that Pena we just looked at earlier, but still nothing to complain about whatsoever. But you have safety due to the finger choil there. If the blade comes loose, your finger's in the way to keep it from closing further. Apart from that, it handles and feels just like most, you know, essentially most locking spider goes out there, which is a good thing and as far as I'm concerned as well. Wire pocket clip to keep things looking subtle on the outside. And then of course the the white of the handle is nice and what's the word I'm looking for? Domestic looking? Classy looking anyway. Very gentlemanly carry overall, but still very good for daily use, I should say. All right, this next knife I actually got a little bit of history with as well. It is an upgraded version of the Boker Subcom, a Chad Los Banos design. Banos? Banos? I'm not sure, actually. The original of this came with Aus 8 steel, and it was either the second or third knife I ever bought from Knife Center back in the day before I worked here. I think it was the second knife I ever bought from Knife Center. I still have it somewhere. Great knife. I love the form factor of it. It folds up into a nice flat pan panel here that fits great in that watch pocket in a pair of blue jeans. It's a small knife that has a bigger grip thanks to that same wide patch, even though it's a two and a half finger grip here. It feels secure thanks to that size. Got a frame lock for security. And now the blade steel has been upgraded to D2 from the Aus 8. So even more edge retention in this two, about two and a quarter inch blade length. Really cool knives. Price on this one is yeah, about $49, just under that. Um, but even less if you go with kind of the, uh, the base standard color model with just the, uh, the black injection molded front scale and the standard um, satin, is it satin blade finish or is it still a bead blasted finish? Um, looks like it's a bead blasted finish on the D2, like $40 for that guy, so not too bad. This one has, of course, the orange as well as the orange thumb, I wouldn't call them a stud so much, but the thumb ramps there uh, for opening and then black stone washed stainless steel frame lock on the back as well. Two position pocket clip, so you can carry it tip up or tip down on the right side. Really cool to see this, which if I'm remembering my history correctly, the Subcom was the first Boker Plus knife. So it's cool to see them keeping it current today. All right, next up we have a new CRKT. This is the Butte from Lucas Burnley Design. And not Butte as in beauty, Butte as in the land formation. Uh, and it's a pretty cool knife. I really like the shape of it. Uh, it's about 125 bucks, and we've got the deadbolt lock, CRKT's kind of new signature locking mechanism. Came out a couple of years ago, two, three, something at this point, and they've been kind of taking a measured approach on the models they're putting it out on. They didn't just plaster it on anything. And this, I think, is my favorite shape for just a general purpose EDC folder that I've seen with the deadbolt lock yet. I'm really digging it. D2 blade steel, three, 0.4, almost 3.4 inches in length, stone wash finish, just this nice looking clip point shape, G10 handles of the, uh, the green variety, and then you've got a copper backspacer. I don't think it's actual copper though. Yeah, it's just an anodized coating right there, which matches with the pivot ring on the deadbolt lock. Now the deadbolt, of course, is named for how it looks on the back, essentially. It looks like the uh, deadbolt that you'd throw on a door lock at home or on the lock for your door at home. And it's got two hardened steel pins that run through the tang of the knife. And when you push this button here, it moves those pins out of the way and you can close the knife. Note about closing the knife. This is an assisted opening knife. 
opens very reliably, very smoothly. And I still think that CRKT's assist system that they've got right now is the one to beat because it's not necessarily the fastest, but it's got a more compliant bias towards closure. And what I mean by that is this is a very easy knife to close one handed. You're not fighting against that spring when you go to push the blade closed the way some other assists can sort of typify or uh, exhi exhibit that behavior. This one, not so much. Very easy to do that without much thought. It's not getting in the way. Would I prefer it maybe if it wasn't assisted and you can just kind of flick this close? Yeah, me personally, I would, but at least you're not fighting the system the way it was designed. It was very smartly engineered to work exceptionally well. And the whole knife, I think, is going to work exceptionally well. Next up, we've got a couple of new Wii and Civivi knives. The first is the Civivi Chevalier. Uh, $90 for this one, uh, but as low as about $69, depending on which version you get. This is one of the fancier ones with wood. Uh, which wood is this? This is their Caborcia wood and their 9CR based Damascus blade steel. But you could get it with G10 and uh, 14C28N steel for that lower price. It's really good steel uh, for this particular knife and for that price at this point. Uh, three and a half inches, just shy of, I should say, with your modified sheep's foot profile, full flat grind with fullers on each side. And of course, everyone's favorite locking mechanism these days, the button lock, because you can do stuff like that. You can flip open, have that fidgety drop shut close, and have a locking mechanism that stays out of the way when you're holding it. Just in, in any of the standard grips I tend to use, I'm not really hitting that button. And then when you're ready to close it, your fingers are out of the way from the edge itself. Very nice. Flips open great. You've got ball bearings in the pivot. You've got a reversible deep carry pocket clip as well. It's funny to think of kind of a fancier aesthetic on this particular knife, for me at least. I think this type of blade shape and size and, and shape, I think of it as a very like hard working aesthetic and, and style of knife designed for like heavier cuts, but they made it kind of more refined feeling or refined looking at least. If that's not your thing, go with the, uh, the $69 version in any case, but really cool knife nonetheless, sure to be another favorite. All right, next up, we've got an Eric Oaks design, the Mini Sandbar from Civivi. $77.50 for this Jade G10 version that comes with a Nitro V blade, uh, just under three inches with a recurve there. Very aggressive little shape. And it's funny to think of like Sandbar, I always think, with a name like that, it should be very Bowie-esque. And it kind of is. It's it's kind of a stylized Bowie thing going on here, and that's pretty cool. The recurve is going to add a little extra cutting length in your blade of that size and give you a little extra shearing power on the pull cuts as well. You could also get this with a Micarta handle. You can also get this, uh, some other G10 options, and you can get it with their Damascus steel as well. We've got a reversible pocket clip made out of machined titanium in this case, liner lock, ball bearings, and a flipper, as is kind of Civivi standard playbook stuff, because frankly, it works exceptionally well. Next up, we have the Press Check, a new knife from Wii in collaboration with Alan Elishowitz, who of course does tactical thing, does the tactical thing in a style all his own, and you can really see it in these knives. Uh, two different blade shapes and two different uh, finishes or colors. So four options in total. You've got a recurve. We'll call that a we'll call that a tanto. Yeah, that's that's a recurve tanto. We do have the uh, the compound grinds there, and you've got a non recurved drop point. Again, in both color variations, you can get either one of those. Just over three inches in length, about you know, three and an eighth or so. Twenty CV steel. Finally finished bead blast finish on this particular one with the uh, the blue accents on the handles. Flipping action, well, it's a Wii with a flipper and ball bearing, so guess what? It's very, very good. Frame locking, G10 inlays on each side. You've got two-tone with black and blue. Blue pivot collar also in G10, reversible pocket clip. And one of the things they do on this that you don't see on some of the Civivis too often is the Screws are flush and the clip is actually sunken in to the surface as well. So it's a completely seamless transition when you're in and out of your pocket heading over to the top end of the clip right there. It's a really attractive looking design. It's 
not necessarily what I would choose first and foremost as a tactical knife, full stop, because it's a little bit smaller. It's kind of a three and a half finger grip uh, for my fingers based on this size, but it's got that flair. It's got that attitude in a more manageable size for most folks anyway, for your everyday carry. Then in another nod to kind of the tactical stuff, you do have a protruding backspacer here at the back. You could use the point of that to kind of concentrate your force onto one spot. You can also use this for yeah, maybe a little bit of light scraping as well, especially if you crisp that up aftermarket with a nice stone aftermarket. Not aftermarket, but if you mod it with a, with a, a sharpening stone, you could get that edge crisp if you wanted to, I bet. Really sexy looking design. Price on those knives, if I didn't mention, about 250 bucks. Next up, we have a Flytanium knife. This is the first Flytanium knife, not just a uh, knife handle accessory. This is the Talisong. Comes in about $289. You've got a four and a half inch blade of AEBL. You've got single piece aluminum handles milled out of single piece, which I already <laughs> already mentioned, sorry for that. Uh, so you've got that kind of channel construction, if you want to call it that. Balance feels really good. The fit and finish is excellent. The flipping action feels a little bit different to me because the handles feel a little bit wider, I would say, than maybe I'm typically used to. Not that I'm a, an expert flipper by any stretch of the imagination, as I almost betrayed by opening it with two hands there. Uh, but it all feels great. The Action is very glidery, just kind of moves through without hanging up on anything. You've got nice touches like the fully crowned spine on here for more comfort during your flipping moves. And then on top of that, you also get this, which they call the Bally Boot. You can pinch the handle shut a little bit more and you slide this essentially little blue silicone piece onto the handle. So that's going to keep them from slipping open somewhere because this is, as you saw, a latchless bally design. There's no latch to keep the handles closed. So if you're throwing this in a bag, I would definitely recommend throwing the bally boot on there as well. All right, next up, we've got a couple new tour knives. And the first is kind of the latest version of their folders. This is the chasm priced at like 200 bucks right now, made in the USA. And as uh, as Seth out there, I think has mentioned to you folks, they feel a step above their first set of releases they are a little more refined a little more dialed in perhaps feel really good three and a quarter inch blade cpm 154 blade steel stone washed finish tanto shape on this particular one nice looking thumb studs there you've got a titanium handle black in this case with a frame lock and a nice deep carry folded clip it feels very good you can flick it open quite nicely even though you don't have ball bearings in this pivot which is a nice touch if you're looking to push this knife through kind of dirtier environments. You don't have to worry about the action suffering as much. It's open back to construction. Solid, feels really solid in fact. And I don't know what it is exactly because I don't have one of the, uh, the initial releases here to compare it directly to. Something about this just feels a couple notches above what they were before, which is pretty cool. Next we have and I just saw the name of this again, and I had a funny thought. I'll tell I'll share it with you in a moment. Thomas might appreciate this because he's a car guy too. This is the Tor Knives Karsumba. So Cargo Zumba, I don't know. It's, it, it was funny in my head anyway. Well, there's that. So, <laughs> so there is that. 235 bucks for this 3V blade steel. Very cool, about two and a half inches on the overall length of that blade, which of course you've got that aggressive hawk bill shape. Great, not just for the self-defense applications that kind of karambits are, you know, pointed to, but great for utility work, especially cutting through fiber stuff, cutting through rope, even cutting through cardboard. Anything you don't want the uh, your material to slip off the blade as you're cutting, the hawkbill shape can kind of help to keep it gathered up on the cutting edge itself. Might not be the best cardboard slayer out there due to the thickness, but the uh, the shape itself is going to do things helpful when you are slicing through that sort of stuff. G10 handles. Wait, no, this is not G10. That's Micarta. Black Micarta handles here. You can see just a bit of the weave. You got that nice, slightly more organic feel in the hand than you would if it were G10. Now, a word of warning, if you are one of the uh, the larger pod folks out there, 
my hands are slightly larger than average and I don't quite have like a full length grip inside the handle there. So keep that in mind. Yes, I can choke back behind the beak at the end of the handle and still feels okay, but it doesn't feel like this knife was made for me and it probably won't feel like it's made for you if you've got big hands as well. The sheath is a Flextech Kydex. It has sort of a, uh, a soft click in and it's got sort of a leather like texture on the outside molded into it. Kind of neat. Uh, belt attachment is sold separately. However, a uh, large tech lock will get you taken care of or something like an ulti clip if you prefer, uh, but you will have to purchase that separately. All right, next up we have the Tor Knives Jank Shank, another Karambit inspired knife, but with a Warncliffe blade rather than a hawk bill. 195 for these, you've got a three inch CPM 154 blade steel, thicker as you might expect on something like this, which is kind of a, a stabby pokey device more than anything else. This is not gonna be an efficient slicer, but it will be a durable daily utility blade if you're gonna put it to use for that sort of thing. Lot of strength and rigidity behind that spine to really stand up to pushing through cuts as you need it to. G10 for the handles, this one is the red because I thought it was rather striking, but there are some other colors that you could have. As far as hand size, if you do have slightly larger than average hands or bigger, for my hands right now, this fits really nicely in a forward grip and on a typical Karambit style reverse grip as well. Kind of perfectly sized for my hand actually, it feels great. Edges are nice and chamfered, so you don't, you're not kind of feeling a hot spot from any of the tang of the knife. A little bit, you feel a little bit more the handles actually, thanks to the kind of aggressive scalloped texture they've given to it. But of course, you've got a lot of grip along with that as well. Sheath is the same Flextech Kydex we just looked at on the previous Tor knife. Uh, and likewise, you have to bring your own tech lock or ulti clip. Tech lock, T clip, ulti clip. Sounds like a Street Hawk vendor selling belt attachment sheets or belt attachment things. But they'll, they will all fit this whole pattern right here. Very nice package when it's put uh, kind of stashed away, not an overly bulky Kydex sheath. So it should be very easy to integrate into your daily equipment. All right, last but not least, which is funny because there's six knives left here, Honey Badger Knives, a new brand to introduce for us here at the Knife Center. And the reason I'm kind of talking about them all together is that's the way it makes sense for this brand because they've got three sizes, large, medium, and small flippers. And yes, those are the names. And they've got several blade shapes available across all the different sizes. So we'll talk about them together. This is another, like a, a new, excellent feeling brand in the budget oriented space. Things are put together really nicely. Uh, this is the small size. All of these knives have uh, injection molded handles, also with several different colors to be had. Nice blade or nice handle shapes that are gonna work for a lot of different hand sizes. You've got a reversible deep carry pocket clip, which is a nice touch. Liner lock and ball bearings in the pivot with the flipping action to go along with it, which is quite nice. And on, the, uh, on each range, you can pay attention to the steels a little bit because D2 is available or 8CR stainless is available. This one right here, this is the small, it shows the drop point blade. Uh, blade length on the smalls is about 2.75 uh, to 2.8, somewhere in there. Uh, each one's, I think they're each a little bit different depending on which blade shape you go for, but all of them are under three inches. HCR stainless versions start at around 33 bucks. Fantastic budget option. D2 available for just over 50 on the small here, $55 for a D2 tool steel blade with more edge retention. Great drop point shape here. It's gonna be a shape that works for just about everyone. You can use that flipper, or if someone's more used to doing like a thumb opening, you've got the thumb hole cut out here. You've got a full flat grind and it's not too thin, so it's not the most efficient slicer, but it's good for a broad, broad range of things. We've also got this modified sheep's foot profile here for a more kind of utilitarian style of blade with the blue FRN on this particular one. Same great action, same great specs. Moving up to the medium size, blade lengths here uh, are about 3.2 or thereabouts and base 8CR models start at $35. The uh, drop point blades 
on all of these can be had with or without a choil. Uh, so they're even on the small, you can get that drop point blade with a choil and there's some jimping in that choil as well. So it's not just a, a smooth or uh, a smooth cutout, you've got a little extra traction right there. Hand or a uh, handle shape still works great at this medium size going to work well for I can't imagine a hand size honestly that would have a problem with this handle shape. It works fantastic. The honeycomb texture on that FRN gives you a little extra grip. You've got a little bit of contour to it as well. It's just a really smartly designed handle. Uh, next blade shape, also shown on the medium size here, we're calling this the leaf shape blade. It's got a little bit of a uh, straight clip point here at the top or at the end and a continuous belly throughout the edge. Really nice, brings the tip down just a little bit compared to uh, the orientation of the drop point. So it kind of splits the difference between the drop point and the modified sheep's foot, for example. You're gonna be able to use the tip here really nicely. It's gonna point forward really nicely if you're try needing to uh, poke or thrust with the knife as well. And of course, the large, you can get all these same blade shapes you've seen so far on the large. And you can also get this gut hook drop point blade here, which is only available on the large. I think this is the only blade shape that is restricted to, restricted to just the one size. Length, uh, about 3.6 or a hair above on the blade length, uh, $36 for the 8CR versions and 59 for D2 options. Which again, you're not gonna get every blade shape in uh, both steel options, so pay attention to the website when you're looking through. Fantastic. Excellent grinds, everything on these feels very well put together. Handle shape continues to work well at the large size. This gut hook version also has that choil there. Flipping action, very satisfying, very nice. <laughs> Works really well if you get your angle right on the middle finger flick. Really smartly designed. They may not have the most exciting names, small, medium, and large, but the product itself is great final blade shape, the Tonto here with a more stout tip here, thanks to that more abrupt grind. A lot of strength there, good shape for daily use as well. You've got belly on the leading edge of that Tonto. It's not a straight chisel tip, if that's what you're looking for, I'm sorry. Um, I'm impressed, for, for these prices especially, these are should definitely be on the list for anyone looking for a solid budget pocket knife. And that's all I have to show you this week. Let me know your favorites down in the comments and to get your hands on any of these knives, links will be in the description and that'll take you over to knifecenter.com. Make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program while you're there, because if you're gonna buy one of these knives, you might as well earn back some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera. We're signing off. See you next time.